Um, so the purpose of today's webinar is really to explore some of the myths and principles of good governance. Um, and we're going to do that through the lens of a fictional case study. Um, the webinar is also going to provide insight into the type of content that is explored through CISL's new eight week online course, Governance for a Sustainable Future, which is due to commence on the 31st of January with its first online cohort of students and is open for registration now. So we'll drop um, the registration link into the chat in just a moment. Uh, and the case study that we are exploring today centres around a business dilemma. So for this discussion, each of our five speakers are going to assume a fictional role um, within the company to engage with the dilemma. Uh, if you want to know more about today's speakers and their non-fictional roles, then please check out the webinar page, which we'll also share a link to. Um, just a quick note on the webinar flow today. Our speakers are going to engage in a case discussion for about 20 minutes. And after this, they will drop their fictional roles and analyse the decision making process. Also invite you to join in at that stage and um, to kind of engage in the discussion. And this is where we will be drawing connections to some of the principles of good governance that are further explored in CISL's new online course. Um, we are encouraging interaction throughout the webinar. Um, I don't think the Q&A function is working, so please just use the chat. Um, and as I said, please introduce yourselves as well. Um, ask any questions that come up uh, because we do have 10 minutes for Q&A at the end. Um, so just briefly to give you an overview of the case uh, that's going to be discussed today, um, we will drop a PDF in the chat in a second, so you'll be able to see some more details about it. Um, but in summary, the speakers are in a meeting of the board for the company Natural Intelligence. Um, Natural Intelligence is a tech giant and they are contemplating moving their manufacturing operations from Taiwan to Sacramento in California. The decision is prompted by geopolitical tensions and also an opportunity to contribute to the US economy. Um, the US government has offered incentives, but the board faces complex considerations that you're going to hear about in a moment. So thank you for joining us today. We hope that this webinar provides valuable insights into decision making and governance for a sustainable future. I'm going to hand over now to our speakers and to Richard Calland, who, for the purpose of this discussion, is chair of the board for natural intelligence. Well, good afternoon, uh, colleagues. Uh, thank you all very much for joining what I think is going to be a very momentous day for our organization. Uh, thank you for making time in your busy diaries to be here. The board, uh, I've invited some uh, significant members of our management team because of the, the nature of this decision uh, there to assist us should we call upon them. So let's get on with it. Um, we're going to be approving a decision that is going to have enormous impact, but I think it's a, a clear cut decision. But let me uh, let, let's run through the formalities nonetheless. Um, uh, Vicky, uh, let, let the general counsel, I think you're well positioned to present the main credentials in favour of this decision. Oh, by the way, it was good to see you last night. I thought, you know, Google do throw a good party, don't they? I must say. Fantastic, uh, wasn't it? It was super. I hope, I hope you didn't drink quite as much as I did. But anyway, I was feeling it this morning. It was very useful to see you there last night. Um, anyway, uh, run through the uh, the arguments in, in favour of this decision, would you? Yes, of course, Dickie. So as general counsel, I'm, of course, here to summarise um, that the board has before it very exciting capital investment proposal to relocate our manufacturing operations to the US, given the current political tensions in the South China Sea. At this meeting, we need to establish whether there is agreement to proceed to phase two of the negotiations with the US government to secure our site in California and to commence the transition planning to scale down incrementally our operations in Taiwan and ramp up the operation in the US. So we anticipate that the company will retain about 30% of the current capacity in Taiwan for at least the next five years. 
I have liaised with uh, senior management. The marketing department I can report believes that having products made in the USA will attract more consumers, and it's likely that that will result in at least a 20% uplift in our current revenue, should, um, and that should be the result that we are expecting. And they also estimate that the brand value um, will increase substantially, and that will safeguard us from any competitors in the foreseeable future. Additionally, finance, of course, the most important uh, group, have reviewed the proposals and expect that the project will yield a very positive net present value and the grant from the US government would defray any significant borrowing costs. And of course, our strong sustainability leadership um, with the Taiwanese um, facility and, and the international rec recognition that we have for green performance means that funds can be borrowed at a lower cost of capital. And the increased revenue, that's expected to far outweigh the short-term spiking operating expenses during this uh, transitional period. So overall, I, as the general counsel, and the senior management team strongly recommends that this proposal go ahead unimpeded. Uh, Vicky, thank you so much. You've presented the matters before us with your customary efficiency and comprehensiveness, and I'm extremely grateful to you. Seems to me, as I said before, pretty open shut uh, decision for us. The case for this uh, move is is overwhelming, isn't it, colleagues? Um, for formality's sake, though, let me just go around the room and, and, and see if there are any uh, possible objections to this. Uh, Bola, I see... I, I see um, your hand is raised, uh, Bola. Um, I, I should give you the floor and give you an opportunity to speak. Uh, it's very important to hear from non-execs on a decision such as this. Go ahead, please. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, and, and I would also like to thank massive effort has gone into putting all this information together. Um, I'd like to allow management to please present us with more information on the proposal. I think it would be more useful for about the thinking around this um, uh, great uh, strategic recommendation. Bola, I have to say, I'm sorry, we're having difficulty hearing you. Um, what a pity, because your perspective on the such matters is always so, uh, so interesting. Um, I'm afraid we'll have to move on because time is against us and we need to, to make a decision today. Um, Beatrice, your hand is up. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks, uh, Dickie. Richard, um, I think um, I, I would like to be heard for a few minutes. Um, I am the Chief Sustainability Officer in charge of ensuring that we're focused on sustainability. Um, I, I know you'll, you'll, you'll lose patience with me very soon, but I think it's important for me to point out that my role is to ensure we live our purpose. Our purpose is currently worded as being, we need to be world leaders in new connected technologies, offering seamless integration across all major appliances and devices in the home. Now, as you know, I'm currently focused on steering us in a new direction where we can become a purpose-driven organization. And this was discussed at the last board meeting. And this means that we really need to focus on the long-term well-being of planet and purpose. So you'll not be surprised to hear that I struggle with why we are having to close uh, Taiwan at all, given, as Vicky kindly pointed out, its strong sustainability credentials. And I haven't heard anywhere in, 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 in your presentation how uh, the impact on people and planet um, uh, we're, we're, this decision will we'll have uh, and, and well, why well, we're thank, being rushed. Thank you, Beatrice. I, I mean, I'm always grateful for your contribution on this subject and and, uh, and you're always very uh, compelling on the subject of purpose, although I must admit I, I haven't fully grasped it yet. It does seem to me our purpose is about financial sustainability as well. We have to make sure that we are resilient for the long term and, and deliver value. And, and this proposal surely does that for the reasons that Vicky's outlined. Um, Mario, uh, your, what, what do we call government relations now? I think I think we call it public affairs. I mean, you're our new public affairs exec. Have you have you considered the regulatory aspects of this? Have you engaged with the the politicos on this? I presume you have in your normal uh, suave fashion. Go ahead. Indeed, Richard. Thank you. Um, 
I think from from our assessment of this proposal, uh, we think uh, there's a lot of good news stories that can come out of this. We know that uh, the US government is, is right behind this. Uh, we know that, you know, the whole mantra of bringing back jobs to the US will play incredibly well. Um, we know that there may be some negative uh, NGO concerns about, you know, large multinational extracting value from a, a developing country and then kind of walking away. Um, but we think we can manage all the perceptions around that. And I think really turn this into a, a really good news story. And we have a lot of leverage with the US government as well. So I think any concerns there are about uh, water supply or any of those sorts of things, I think we can uh, ask the government to provide some sort of guarantee on that front um, because we're, we're seeing the negotiations are panning out very positive and very much in our favour. Well, that's very useful, Mario, I must say. Where, where do these concerns about water come from? Uh, Bola, is that something you'd like to address? Yes. Um, I But I'm sorry, I'm still, still got a very difficult connection, I'm afraid. But, Bola, um, we'll have to come back to you once again on that. Maybe you could uh, yeah. draft a memo or, or, or send that through. Uh, Vicky, on, on this question of purpose, we keep coming back to it, uh, board meeting after board meeting, and, and it seems to be a, a sort of grit in the wheel, really, of our decision making. Um, uh, reporting, you're in charge of our reporting. We're we're ticking all the boxes, aren't we? There. Oh yes, yeah. We've got fantastic compliance department. Um, so as long as we're we're covering that, you know, that's really our obligation. Um, and as long as Mario's covering any reputational issues that could hit our bottom line, I mean, you know, what's what else is to talk about really? I mean, you know, I do get purpose can be really useful for those good news stories. Um, I think we've got that in hand, huh? Oh, that's excellent news. And and on the risk profile front, um, I saw you know, Jimmy phoned me the other day, said his company's been sued. Those Friends of the Earth people in uh, Holland are pretty active these days. Any any risk uh, liabilities lining up for us? Not going to be sued, are we? Well, you know, safety in numbers, hey? Gosh, what's coming through and the extent it's coming through, there's so much chaos There'll be so many people that are non-compliant that even if, you know, we struggle a little bit, I think we'll be down on the list of, you know, they, they can't police at all. So I'd say that's, that's a calculated risk. It would be really silly for us to do something um, that would hit our bottom line just in case, you know, we don't tick a box, you know, cross a, cross a T or something somewhere. There'll always be people that are worse than us, that's for sure. Excellent. That's a very good uh, calculation, I would say. Uh, Beatrice, can I come... Let's just deal with the water matter before we move on. It does seem to be something that uh, Mario is concerned about. He tried to underplay it a bit, but I sense uh, some disquiet on his front. So so let's deal with that. Uh, as Chief Sustainability Officer, are you concerned about the water issue here? Oh, yes, of course I am, Richard. Very concerned about it. Um, it looks like we might need to use a, a very large amount of water and what I would like to ask the board if it would consider um, making some capital allocations so that we can invest in technology which allows us to use less water, that, that would be really, really helpful in this case. Well, that, that's, uh, that's going to have to be made out as an investment case. Have you, have you done the paperwork, Beatrice? Have you set out those details for, for Vicky and her team to consider? Um, yeah, remembering, I mean, we need at least a three year payback. It can't, I mean, even three years. I mean, we very rarely would do an investment at three years. So three years or less, please, Beatrice. Yeah. I, yeah, yes, of course, I will go away and prepare something. It is something I've raised in past meetings and I did do a paper last year. Um, I guess it didn't make it up the agenda. Uh, well, I think that's why we have the sustainability subcommittee, don't we? Um, I think that's that's where such ideas go to be, how can I put it, handled? Yes, we're, we're still forming forming that uh, as, as we speak. 
I see. Very good. Mario, can I just come back to you on, on the public affairs matter? Have you engaged with a broader, you, you talked, I think, compellingly about the conversations with the American government, and they're clearly friendly and warm, very warm to this idea. Uh, what about the NGO community? Have you, uh, have you engaged with them? So there is, so I did have, um, I did catch up with Bola for coffee um, the other day because she was concerned about our reputation. There is um, quite a lot of NGO effort about um, just how much water we would use if we were to um, uh, build a plant uh, in Sacramento, and that could raise a lot of issues for the local community because at present there is no additional water supply coming on stream um, for the next decade. So uh, NGOs have been quite vocal in terms of their concerns just on the, the drain we will place on the, the resources in the area. So I think I think unfortunately Bowler's technology was um, wasn't working today, but I know she did raise that with me personally. So I do feel like I do have to report that. I mean, we, we've just installed, we've just brought in that risk register, Dickie, haven't we? We can just put yeah, it, yeah. should we put that on the risk register? That seems I like think, probably I the... Think if do that will be nicely covered. I agree with you, Vicky. Um, I just wonder, I think I should, Bola, give you one last opportunity to uh, see if you can uh, effectively connect with this meeting. It's a great pity you haven't been able to, but uh, as the non-exec, I'm keen for your uh, consent before we proceed. So, Bola. Uh, Bola's got your hat. You've got your hand up. Afraid I can't hear you. Beatrice, can you jump in? Perhaps you can uh, help on this. And it'd be great if you could unmute. I think that would help us all. Thank, thank you, Richard. I, I know time is precious, but there were just a couple of other areas that we, we needed to focus on, what water being important. Um, the, the other being uh, our employees in Taiwan and other centers that, um, uh, marketing centers we have around the world, what, what their views of this are, and, and many other stakeholders. We've got suppliers and others, the German government, Vicky, I mean, do we know that the grant will still be in place? After, if we move to Sacramento, they, they moved our headquarters there at great expense. Um, so, so that 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 area, there's a few concerns I have there as well. Uh, well, thank you, Beatrice. You seem to be a sort of throwing uh, cold water over this uh, at every possible opportunity. Um, do you... no, no, no. Sorry, Richard. Well, well, go on. Are you are you apologising for that, or do you wish to say some more? No, I was apologising. Oh, well, that's apologizing. that's very good. Yeah. Um, excellent, thank you, uh, Vicky. Anything else we should consider? I think time to probably uh, deal with this. It seems to me. I, th I think we we need to move to a decision. I, I would counsel that really time is. You know, we've got a small window here. I think you as chair should uh, should make. Yeah. Us... And I must say, investors have been in my ear all morning, uh, really saying this is an opportunity we shouldn't miss. Uh, there are other players. Uh, it would be unwise to let this pass. I think we have to move fast. It's tempting to kick it down the road to next month and to maybe uh, bring in our beloved ESG committee in on the act and give them a chance. But actually, my gut, and I've got to trust my judgment on this one, uh, and then deploy my authority appropriately is to say we proceed. And so uh, that then will be the decision. Thank you, Vicky, for such a comprehensive and helpful uh, background paper with uh, having covered all the bases. I'm very comfortable. Mario, you've been most useful. And Beatrice, as always, pleasure to have you join us and to um, help us understand, yes, our true purpose as a company. Thank you all for your time uh, and look forward to our end of year function uh, at the Ritz next month. Very good. Thank you all. Okay, well, I think we can now um, figuratively strip off those roles and the caricatures that we were playing in them, um, which I hope were beyond kind of entertainment value, but in a very short period of time and in a, in a necessarily caricatured way, we tried to give, uh, ventilate some of the kinds of things that can happen in 
in board meetings um, and in other governance structures. So although we took the board as the, the stage for this particular role play, we want to make some points, which we'll discuss now, um, in terms of how decision making that can take place at any level in every part of any organisation. And we see uh, governance has been the glue that binds an organization and differentiates a good organization that's future fit from one that isn't. Um, so we'll get into that now. Stripped off from those roles uh, and well played everybody, if I may say so. Bola, great pity that uh, your, your tech let us down. Ironic given that we were a tech company. Um, but um, uh, Vicky, you were cast as a bit of a villain in that piece. And you are, of course, a great proponent of ISO 37000 and all of the really interesting stuff it says about governance. Um, direction, oversight and accountability are the, the cornerstones of its approach. Um, uh, and I'd like to call you to, to speak to that. But before we carry on talking, because the audience may already be bored with us. So let, let's throw this to the audience. What, what watching that was obviously missing? In, in terms of governance and good decision making, what were the things that really stood out? Can I just throw it immediately to the audience and bring in people who have kindly joined us for this webinar? going to just very briefly say, and those values can't just sit there as a nice list of things. They need to be embedded in decision making parameters along with the law, along with risk tolerance. So that it's really, really clear that these are this we make we optimize for this, but within these things. So it's moving values from a nice thing on the website to structuring decision making. Sorry, Mario. Go ahead. I, I was just going to say it's really important for, you know, voices around the, the board table but in any decision making context um, to play devil's advocate. So, you know, political instability in South South China Sea and in relation to Taiwan, arguably, you know, next year there could be political instability in the US with a with an election. And we've seen that play out, you know, in the in the you know most recent election in the US. So I think it's really important to not be shy to say what if what what if this didn't happen you know what if the government were to change do we get a, a cast iron guarantee that the the government won't renege on the support um that you know that they've promised i mean i think often we we you, there's so much bias that comes into our decision making you know we just think oh us must be good must be safe uh, therefore, that's always got to be a better decision than being based in Taiwan. But, you know, the amount of um, bias that is built into all of those decisions and, and thought processes really need to be challenged because it's very easy to end up making a, a kind of fatal decision um, for companies that then are very, very costly and, you know, just ignore. I mean, the thing that we've completely ignored in all of this is the fact that we're going to make a whole workforce in Taiwan unemployed, who've been very loyal, who've contributed. I mean, they have been major investors in our company in terms of creating value. And we're saying thank you by saying bye, we're going, we're not going to support you. So, you know, there, there's a lot of these things that really need to be unpacked before we kind of sign off and say yes, um, the finances stack up, therefore we should make this decision. Yeah, and I think the the S in ESG um, should have been the dominant point of conversation in this decision making. And as you say, Mario, we we barely touched on it, if at all, um, mm -hmm. the people side of it. Uh, poor old B was trying to get something in about that, but I was giving her obviously no space uh, to do so. And your point about um, kind of worldviews and, and underlying uh, assumptions, the only way of unpicking those, of surfacing them and then engaging them is if someone is is brave enough to challenge and you've got to create the right culture. <laughs> for that. 
and, and groupthink, you know, the literature on groupthink, I've always found fascinating uh, back from the early 60s and, and Kennedy's two decisions from the Bay of Pigs and then the, the better decision making around the, the, the Cuban Missile Crisis reveals how a good leader at any point of decision making in any organization will invite contrarian thinking in order to, to, to road test, to panel beat uh, the decision. Um, just on, uh, I, there was a very interesting comment here about about the the role you played, uh, Victoria, um, in terms of you know leaning heavily into compliance as a kind of solution to a lot of the stuff that I put to you. Um, you played the role of lawyer extremely well, I must say. Um, and and the point as a lawyer, to, I know <laughs> want to be as a as, as another lawyer. You know, often general counsel, um, with respect to my own profession, are a real obstacle to progressive decision making and progressive governance because they are risk averse. We're trained to be risk averse. We see things through a, a compliance lens and so on. B, do, do you agree with that? And how how should an organisation counteract that kind of tendency? Yeah, I mean, the, the, the role of the general counsel historically has been to uh, look after legal risk um, and ensure, which means compliance with regulation, Etc. The thing is that the, the spectrum, I think, in my humble view, has moved in, in that legal risk comes out of much more now. For example, uh, statements you make in, in, you know, when we announce this deal, the statements we make, if we can't back them up with data, we may end up with, with litigation. Um, and also the, the whole ESG um, movement, in a way, is, is, is teaching companies to look a bit forward see what risks are coming their way and regulation will eventually ca catch up with them. Um, but I think general counsels know this, They're, at least in my experience un until recently, is that they are very interested to have a seat at the table. So they, 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 they are keen to learn how, 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 all these things, how all these things work. So they, they don't like being in the legal risk box because it doesn't stand in isolation from all the other uh, risks, reputational risk. Um, but uh, in my experience, lawyers, um, perhaps like economists, tend to ring fence their discipline in sort of impenetrable ways in order to protect their power uh, in an organization. Uh, and that power then can steer a decision in a particular way unless it's, unless it's properly interrogated and challenged. Uh, these and many more topics and issues are canvassed and traversed in the course, the exciting new course that we have under Mario's leadership. Uh, put together and which is going to be launched uh, very soon. Uh, so on that note, I'd like to hand back to uh, Ellen to say a few more words about that new course. Um, and Ellen's been leading the team to support the production of that uh, new course, which has been thrilling to be involved with. We're all disciples of governance. We all love governance. We think it's a very uh, exciting topic. And I hope that all of you have joined this webinar. Uh, share that view uh, and would like to, uh, in the future, contribute to our work and thinking in relation to governance. We think it's central to building a sustainable future. And so uh, to my fellow actors, uh, thank you very much indeed for playing your part so ably and for our subsequent conversation to the audience. Thank you for your really interesting contributions to it and for joining us, giving us an hour of your time. I hope you feel it was well spent. Thank you all very much. Back to you, Ellen. Thank you. Um, I certainly enjoyed that and have enjoyed uh, working with you all over the past year as well and have learned a lot and would say I've become a governance enthusiast myself. So you've been doing, <laughs> doing something right. Um, so yeah, just to echo Richard's thanks, really all of the speakers um, from today have been key contributors to the course, either um, as members of the advisory panel, lead contributors, and through the podcasts and video content um, that they have contributed to the course. Um, as Richard mentioned, Mario Abella um, has been the course convener who has led on the content development for this course, so has taken inputs from all of the lead contributors. And we're also lucky to have Beatrice on the call with us today as um, B is going to be the head tutor when the course goes live in January um, and there will be a second tutor joining her um, who is Victoria Puxley. Um, so just a quick note really to say that um, 
it, on the course, learners will have the opportunity to engage with many of the cases like the one that has been discussed today. Um, so with real world practical case studies that you'll be able to discuss with your online cohort and with the tutors. Um, and you'll also engage with the good governance principles that were discussed today. So drawing from um, the international standard 37,000, which I believe Victoria is the first international standard on governance of organisations. Um, the final thing that I kind of I wanted to say about the principles of good governance as well, because it was something that we touched on in the discussion, um, is that there is a really strong focus on the critical importance of people and culture um, within the course. So learners are really encouraged to think about the stakeholders within and external to their organisation, in addition to thinking about what their governance is directed at and the parameters set up to achieve their goals. Um, so if you find this interesting uh, and you're keen to engage more with how governance can help to strengthen decision making, then please do register your interest for the course or share it with your networks with anyone who you think um, might be keen to join us in January. And I think that's everything, unless anyone else wanted to make any closing remarks. I would just say, Alan, I think it's a, a ph phenomenal lineup of global experts that we we bring to this course and and the course really is aimed at people within an organization wherever they are in that organization uh, understanding and seeing the part that they play in governance so this isn't about what happens in the boardroom it's much broader than that it's how does a system within the organization work or not work and what are the consequences and i think the other key thing to highlight is we provide you with a, a toolkit or a toolbox. Um, we make you think we don't provide you with all the answers because we don't think there are answers. The answers have to be developed by you in your context. And I think that's one of the kind of key takeaways that, you know, there isn't a cookie cutter approach to governance. It's really about in, in using the right principles, which we go through, and then employing those principles to find the solutions. Great, thanks Mario. Perfect note to end on. So thanks everyone for joining us. Um, and I think we say goodbye. <laughs> Good day. Bye everyone. Pleasure. Thanks. Bye. Thanks everyone. Thank you.